morning. As you can tell, I didn't notify anybody. <clears throat> I've been on the phone all morning to various points around the country. But even on the phone to me, I've talked to a lot of people today. And I've read a lot of news articles and I've read a lot of analyzations. So I was going to write an article and I probably still will. I'm a little shaky today, but not because I'm an old drunk or anything. The dust and pollen count is indescribable right now. And I took a dose of Claritin D. When I take a dose of Claritin D, it makes my fingers shake. So that's all as well. I feel great. I mean, I can breathe. I can breathe. That's a, I'll, t I'll take a little finger twitch and, and breathing any day of the week. I'll just have a cocktail tonight and that, that'll go away. Anyway, <clears throat> um, okay, special prosecutor. I touched this uh, yesterday a little bit to help calm somebody down, but I've got so many calls today. I'm going to tell you all my take on this, and then I'll probably put this in an article. I have a team that works uh, with me, and they're actually, yes, I've seen that, Diane. I was watching it just now. Uh, that was terrorist. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, the first thing you've got to understand is that we were going to have a special prosecutor. That was going to happen. The Democrats were pushing for it real hard, and they wanted to be, uh, you know, more or less in charge of who it was going to be. When the now famous Comey memo crap came out, the director of the Justice Department, or Kilson or Kilson, whatever his name is, uh, he had to move decisively at that point and make sure that we got a, a prosecutor that was uh, bipartisan. So Robert Mueller, let's talk about Robert Mueller. This man was so good that he was confirmed by 100% of the Senate as an FBI director under George Bush. He was so good that when Obama took office and, and his term ran out, the 10-year term they normally have, that President Obama asked him, would you please stay on a couple more years? I need you. Now, that's as, that's as bipartisan as you get. This man has a reputation uh, of uh, transcending politics. But the main thing you've got to understand is we were going to have a special prosecutor. The other thing is uh, when you get a special prosecutor, it's kind of like a call at a poker game. Now, all the cards are going on the table. Um, this man has a carte blanche license to investigate, which is a very good thing. <coughs> all of these, uh, what we've been putting up with is everybody from Nancy Pelosi to Michael Moore have been screaming impeachment. <coughs> Almost from the second uh, President Trump's hand left the Bible on the inauguration day. You know, uh, Michael Moore, I'm going I'm to see him impeach. Nancy Pelosi throwing that stuff around. <coughs> Paul Ryan is kind of hedging, you know, kind of hedging because he's looking at 2020. Okay, now it's for real. Now it's for real. <clears throat> now we're going to have all the facts brought out, including if he stumbles across any of those emails that came out of Hillary's deal, uh, accidentally stumbling over the border just a little bit here and everything, well, he's going to open her up too. He's going to open her up too. And it won't be <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Comey. It won't be Comey. Well, there's nothing you see here. Move along. No. One classified email going to the wrong person, and he's going to be a prosecutor. Do I think Donald Trump himself did anything wrong? No. And something else you've got to understand. When you read the Constitution definition of impeachment, uh, Gerald Ford once said that the articles of impeachment de uh, depend on what the Congress believes at any given time. But here's the deal. The one rule that stands fast you could be impeached for what you did while you were in office. In other words, you take the oath, and then you do an impeachable offense. It doesn't matter if Donald Trump had a vodka factory in Moscow when he was a private citizen, as long as he doesn't have that vodka factory right now. Okay? Now, another thing you're going to have to understand, and I hear these, uh, these hater groups out there, and I'm not going to name either one of these two jackasses, but you hear these hater groups and on one side of the fence, we support our president right or wrong, you know, and on the other side of the fence, you got this cat that, that uh, got his girlfriend copying and pasting and everything. You get no news from them people. No news. You have to use your common sense. When they unwrap and peel this onion, 
when they peel this onion, there is a possibility that someone working the Trump campaign did something they shouldn't have done. That's the way it works in the real world. Now, Donald Trump didn't do it. Donald Trump was a 70-year-old man making three or four speeches a day for 18 months. Donald Trump was more worried about, is the sound system okay? How do I get to the next stop? Um, Becky, uh, you, you line this up. You line that up. You line this up, okay? Did he have hands-on on every single decision? No. No, he did not. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't think you can see anything come out about Donald Trump. Now, that is, I support the president, but that's not blind, ignorant support. That is, I don't think he did anything. Do I think in an organization that size, with a turnover and everything, if somebody did something stupid? Most likely. But collusion with the Russians. In other words, what is collusion? But the, the mainstream media and these hater groups want y'all to think that if anybody even said hi to a Russian on the street, it's collusion. It's not. These people in Washington know each other. We got, oh, what was that, that? 18 phone calls that come from the Trump campaign to this and this and this. Okay, what are you doing today? We don't know. We're down here at the embassy. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do at lunch. I think we should go to Papa Do's and have lunch together. That sounds good, comrade. I go to Papa Do's with you. That's not collusion. That's a couple of guys going to lunch. Okay? Uh, as far as Donald Trump saying classified material that he let the Russians know. I'm going to give you a scenario. And I'm not saying this is what happened. Okay. Here comes the Russian guy in. They close the door. And Donald Trump says, <clears throat> I don't, <clears throat> don't like what you're doing in Syria, but how would you like to know where the main headquarters of ISIS is? Oh, comrade. That would be gold. Well, I happen to have this classified document here that I'm unclassifying. If you go to these coordinates right there and you break the big old bomb, you might not have no more ISIS for a while. You know, that's not collusion. That's not endangering the safety of, 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 of the United States. But that is someone saying, you Russians are already there. <clears throat> You're trying to get these guys. We don't agree with your motives, but you want to get these guys. We're going to tell you where these guys are. We're going to give you some of our our classified information that I'm going to unclassify to help you direct that bomb to these here ragheads. So, this is going to be a long, drawn-out process. <clears throat> um, there's already wild innuendo. No, it didn't. It, Tina, that's exactly right. Putin, Putin made a joke about it. Uh, there's going to be, there is, uh, I talked to Ker Kerry today. There is a group in, I believe, Florida, and they're booking motel room, hotel suites for the end of the year for the impeachment party. Now, yeah, that's like a prosecutor in a murder case uh, when he starts picking the jury and he goes and rents a, a suite in the local hotel to have a conviction party. This is what's wrong with your country. This is why Mr. Trump gets in so much trouble. See how stupid these people are? See how dumb they really are? Now, these people are running your country now. How dumb they really are. And Mr. Trump comes along and puts them up the scale of a New York uh, real estate broker. And they can't stand it. Yeah, they don't. They talk about immigration. Let me tell you about immigration. I have a friend, one of my co-writers, parked a truck last night over in Louisiana. Okay, kind of a seedy little truck stop, but you park where you can. He walks his little dogs. As he walks around the back of the building to walk his little dogs, there's two buses from South America, Peruvians or whatever. Two buses for them. Okay. They got open fires going where they're cooking chickens or whatever. Not one word of English being spoken. Two of them are taking a crap in the parking lot. Welcome to America. That's what Mr. Trump's trying to stop. Right there. As real as it gets, current as your newspaper. That's last night, less than 12 hours ago. But this is, uh, I may write the article today or I may write it tomorrow. <clears throat> I've got, frankly, I've got to learn more about it. What I'm giving you right now is my opinion of the way it's going to go. Um, the one thing I told my followers that have been calling me today is the bottom line, and I actually read this in, a, in an article after I said it. If they, if the Congress comes up with articles for impeachment, which is not written in stone, they're still facing a Republican Congress with a sitting Republican president. That's a fact. 
And I have people, well, some of the Republicans are turning on No, they have disagreements with Mr. Trump. They're not turning on him. But when it comes down to removing the Republican president and crippling their, their leverage, they'll know what to do. And you don't impeach somebody in two weeks either. This investigation uh, that Mueller is starting, it may run two years. <clears throat> it may run two years. And, but I don't think with a man of that caliber, he's going to come back and say, oh, we looked at it, there wasn't nothing there. There wasn't nothing there. There's going to be something there. It's just not going to be Mr. Trump himself. There's going to be something there. Don't, don't let yourself be overly concerned with the gyrations of the Democrats. And do not... Look, one thing that irritates me is some fat guy like Michael Moore can sit on the West Coast and say he's going to get Donald Trump impeached. Okay, give this son of a gun a ham sandwich and send him down the road. Well, he needs to concentrate on how to make money on his, on his next movie, which he doesn't seem to be able to do right now. You know, make a movie everybody wants to watch. Make a movie that gets more views than some 13-year-old girl on Facebook live feed. Yeah, start with that, Mike. Start with that. <clears throat> you know, simple as that. Um, I don't know anything about the events in Times Square right now. It happened just as I went live. I know it's a terrorist action because that's what they're using now is cars to inflict terror because it's, you can't track it. You got a guy that's driving down the middle of Times Square in New York and all of a sudden he just deviates onto the sidewalk and takes 17 people out. There's no way to tell he was going to do that before he did it. But that is the reason, right there, we need to cooperate with people like the Russians, and we need to go over there, and we need to kill the head shed. Because that's going to stop this kind of nonsense. We don't need to suspend the Constitution. <clears throat> we don't need to uh, have Patriot Acts or anything like that. We just need to go to the enemy and make sure the enemy doesn't have a chain of command. We even backed Hitler up into a bunker. Why, why can't we do this to these bunch of camel jockeys? Come on. Uh, that's it. <clears throat> I may come on again this afternoon. I'm going to be working on this article for a couple days. Um, I've got my team working on the, the background of it and everything. I, normally I'll jump on something like this right away, but I, there's so much fear mongering out there with these hate groups that when you see me, I want you to see the truth and what I really think. And I've, I've never lied to you that I know of, not much. When Donald Trump was in a field of 12 Republican contenders for the nomination, I wrote not one but three articles predicting he was going to be president. president. Yesterday, I said, there is a possibility of an impeachment hearing. Until yesterday, I didn't think so. Now, Comey, let's talk about Comey for a second. He wrote a memo. Mm -hmm. He went to uh, dinner with the president, steps out of the room and writes a memo. All right. But, and and you, hear the, you hear the Democrats saying, well, that has a lot of weight because of who he is. Okay, this guy... It's the same one. He he read 650,000 uh, emails from Hillary. Didn't find anything wrong. This guy opened the investigation again two days before the election and said, "Nothing to see here, folks." Hmm? Yeah, this guy couldn't catch a school teacher shacking up with a 15-year-old traveling across the country like he was on a field trip. That's this guy, All right? He made a memo. What he needs to do is he needs to type that memo memo up in Braille and stick it up his ass. <laughs> 